All right, before we get too far, we're going to go to Tools, Preferences, and go to GPU and turn on any graphics cards. Just ch ch check this little checkbox so that PhotoScan uses the graphics cards to help accelerate the processing process. The more horsepower you can throw at photogrammetry, the better. It's going to utilize your GPU, your CPU, a ton of RAM. Uh, in this instance, on this computer, we're using the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 16-core processor at 3.4 gigahertz and 128 gig of RAM, which means all of this image processing that it's going to have to do and this point cloud data it's going to have to recreate, it can utilize as much of my hardware as possible. And it also go a lot faster, so photogrammetry isn't as painful. You're not having to stand around and wait around for uh, too much. In fact, uh, the demo we're going to show here, I'm not anticipating anything more than a couple minutes per process, but we'll see how it goes. Next thing we want to do is get our photos in here. So I'm going to go click on this little button right here. If you hover over that, it's going to be Add Photos. And just go to the folder you want to. We're going to go to the girl statue here. And by default, you're going to have a bunch of DNG and JPEGs all mixed together because we told our we told our camera to shoot raw, which is the DNG files and JPEGs at the same time. If we just want the DNG files for now, just go ahead and sort by type. And of course, you can go in here again, go to view details, and then just sort by type. And now we can just select all of our raw DNG files. Now, I like DNG files because you can see their file size isn't that large. It is 30 meg per shot, so it is pretty hefty compared to the JPEGs, which are very compressed, uh, but they're nowhere near as large as, say, a lossless TIFF. So what you can do with these raw files is you can open them up in Lightbox, for example, and change the sharpness and exposure, etc., and then export those out as lossless TIFFs and then bring those in. Uh, but in lieu of doing that, I'm just going to bring in the DNG files, and we'll see what kind of results we get. So again, these are just the raw images directly imported into Spotoscan. Now, one type of shooting scenario we didn't really talk about in here. So what we did was we did an isolated object where I basically walked around the object with our camera. Another one you can do is you can have a stationary turntable, well, a stationary camera shooting a turntable, and the turntable you turn and the object turns and the camera doesn't move. We're not going to get too deep into that, but what you would want to do is go ahead and add these to a camera group and then tag those as the camera station. It's not applicable in this case, but just in case you are shooting on a turntable, which is totally fine, uh, that's going to be an option you're going to need to check. So anyway, you can see we have our images here. If you double click any of these images, it's going to pop up here. And here's our DNG photo here. You can see my messy garage. And you can see I'm basically just walking around the object. If you zoom in, you can use your left mouse to move around the object. You can zoom in and see how much detail you're getting. And now that we're looking at it, one pro tip, don't put your object on a very light, colorful surface because what you're going to end up getting is bounced light or reflected light from this bright yellow box onto the bottom of your object. Oops. But not a huge deal in this case. We're just doing this for a demo. But in ideally, what you would do is put a white or a gray sheet down so that you're not getting yellow reflected light. But like I said before, oh well. Now, if you're going through these photos and you see any that are really bad or really blurry, what you can do is, you, with the, the photo selected here, you can just go over here to this little remove camera, and that'll go ahead and delete the image. Or you can simply go over here to the disable camera, and that'll disable it. So you'll get a little red thing here. If you want to enable it, just re-enable it. Now, all the photos look fine to me, to my eyeballs, but what you can do is actually have PhotoScan look at your image and determine the relative quality of the images. Now, you don't have to select all of them. You can just right-click on any of these and go to Estimate Image Quality, and then you can tell it the selected ones, which we would only had one selected. You can Shift-Select as many as you want. Or you can say All of them and hit OK. And you're going to see it's analyzing the photos. Okay, that took about 51 seconds, and you can see uh, it's a pretty CPU-intensive process. As much hardware as you can throw at these processes, the faster it's going to go. That took about a minute for 50, 52 cameras. So we've analyzed them, but how do we tell what the quality is? Well, you're going to want to go over here to this little view here and go to Details. And now you can see here's the quality section right here. So each image has a quality rating, and if you go up here and you sort by quality, um, you can go, if you hit it twice, you can see we have a 0.81, which is great. And PhotoScan says anything below 0.5, you should probably get rid of. Here's a 0.49, 47, 42, 41. Uh, if you want to see these, you can double click them and you can try and evaluate like why it would give it such a low rating. If you want to, you can go ahead and just shift select all of these, right click and say disable cameras. And then we'll go back here to our medium. And you're going to see these ones right here all are disabled. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just say, you know what? I'm going to enable all those cameras. We're just going to go for broke here. But that's just one way to have PhotoScan evaluate your photo's quality for you.
Now, the reason you'd want to remove blurry or bad photos is because when it goes to try and create that geometry, it's going to confuse things, it's going to be inaccurate, it's going to give you bad textures. So you do want to remove bad photographs if there's anything obviously wrong with them. Now, another thing you may want to do is apply masks to these photos. Um, while it's aligning the cameras, you're going to want to use these background points, as long as your background is stationary, and use these points to help determine where the alignment of the camera is, which we're going to get to in a second. Uh, but what you're not going to want to do is have all of this imagery right here being calculated, and because you're going to get a lot of extraneous information. So if you want to, and it's kind of a painful process. You can actually do this in Photoshop. You can go to an external program and all you basically want to do is mask out the object by itself. You can use a magic wand tool. You can use the magic wand tool in here too. You can just go through here and you can select or you can use intelligent paint and you can kind of just paint along your object here and it'll go through and kind of separate out your object. You can go in here with your lasso and just manually go through and start clicking here. So if we have a selection made, you can say add selection. You can change the rectangular selection and you can say add selection. You go back here and you can use again use your magic wand tool, use your smart paint tool, and you can go through here and mask this object out all within Photoscan. Now I find this to be an incredibly tedious process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in here and go to reset mask. And I'm going to show you a little trick in here to go ahead and get your object mask if that's something you think you want. But we'll do that later. For now, we're going to skip the masking step.